Okay, so I'm going to be talking about Our Lady the Pillar tonight. Um, for most of my life, the only thing I knew about Our Lady the Pillar is that it was the name of a church down the street for me. And I had like little to no knowledge. And it's just amazing that when you take time to look at something a little bit more closely, like how much you can learn about it. So just want to share with you a few of the things that I learned. So after Pentecost, when the 12 apostles were in the upper room, um, we know that according to the Acts of the Apostles that that's when they were dispersed around the world. They were all sent out into different regions. And um, St. James the Greater was sent to teach in the Iberian Peninsula, which is today modern day Spain. Um, and while he was preaching there, he was getting really discouraged because he was feeling like he only had with all of his efforts, he only had a handful of converts. Um, so he was getting very discouraged. And so according to the, to the account that we understand, Our Lady is the one who actually assigned St. James to the Iberian Peninsula area. And she promised him that she would come to his aid in his time of need. And, and so anyway, here he is in his most desolate hour. He's thinking, you know what, I'm going to pull up stakes. I'm not going to stay here anymore. This is just not working out. But what he decided to do is he gathered his disciples together and they were by the Erbo, Erbo River, I may, may be saying that wrong, in modern day Zaragoza. And by that river, he pulled them all together and he said, okay, we need to pray. And as they were praying, um, and this happened while Mary was still alive living in Jerusalem, but she appeared to St. James and his disciples mm -hmm. right by this river. And she came to them, and she came to them in his most time of need, and she came to him with the angels hearing her as she stood upon this pillar made of jasper, and in her arms she was holding a statue of herself and her son. And, and so this, this whole, you know, she appeared to James and his disciples. So she told James, do not worry. The people to whom he preached would not only be converted, but they would one day have faith as strong as the pillar on which she stood. So she gave the pillar and the statue to St. James and asked that a church be built on the spot in her honor, um, using these two items as a part of the altar. She's told him, this place is to be my house and this image and column shall be the title and altar of the temple that you shall build. And the people of this land will honor my son Jesus greatly. After asking for her church to be built, she gave another promise that it will, this church will stand from the moment, from this moment until the end of time, in order that God may work miracles and wonders through my intercession for all those people who place themselves under my patronage. So St. James built a small chapel as Our Lady requested by the Arabo River in Zaragoza, Spain. This is the first known Marian shrine in history. I did not know that. I thought that was amazing. It became known as Our Lady of the Pillar. The chapel was replaced by larger churches over the years, and the present stunning basil basilica was erected in the 17th century. The statue and the pillar, and I've got a picture right up here. That's what it looks like. The statue and the pillar have been preserved in the basilica just as they were given to St. James almost 2,000 years ago. That's amazing to me. The pillar is now covered in an embossed metal covering. So the pillar portion has been covered so we don't see the stone. Um, but behind the altar, a portion of the pillar is exposed for veneration. So now we come to Blessed Chaminade. So Blessed Chaminade had to leave France because of all the persecutions. So he was in exile in Spain. And for, for, so he went there October the 11th of 1797. So the Marianist founder, Blessed William Joseph Chaminade, arrived in Zaragoza. He had been exiled from his native France because of ongoing persecutions of the French Revolution. And he stayed there for three years. And he spent many hours in prayer at the great shrine of Our Lady of the Pillar. And it was there that he was inspired with a vision for the re-evangelization of France. 
a special message from Mary helped him to conceive of a family of religious and lady that would participate with Mary in her apostolic mission to bring Jesus to others. So kind of some Our Lady of the Pillar fun facts. So it was <laughs> the first known apparition to ever occur of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It was the only known apparition to occur during her lifetime. Um, the Basilica of Our Lady of the Pillar in Zaragoza, Spain is the first church dedicated to the Virgin Mary. And Our Lady of the Pillar is the patroness of Spain and all Hispanic peoples. Um, the first known apparition of Our Lady and her first church were entrusted to the Spanish people. I think that's cool. The church has remained in the same location after fires, wars, and disasters over the centuries. Um, three bombs were dropped on the Basilica during the Spanish Civil War, and that was 1936 to 1939 that that went on. Miraculously, none of them exploded. Visitors to the church may notice a curious memorial that hangs to the side chapel. Two bombs are displayed there. A symbol not of violence, but a miraculous intervention. During the opening days of the Spanish Civil War in 1936, the two bombs were dropped on the church by airplanes and neither one exploded. They remain today as a reminder of how the power of love is stronger than any armament. You know, they were meant for destruction, but the power of love halted that, and that's amazing. Love is stronger than the discouragement and sense of, sense of failure that James experienced when he was trying to minister to people. So I just thought maybe we could just quickly cl close with a prayer on this topic that we could just say, you know, just pray that like James, sometimes we too experience discouragement and we also fear failure, that, that who we are and what we're trying to do is not enough. During those times of doubt and frustration, Lord, give us courage to ask others to pray with us and for us. Lord, help us to seek you. And finally, we pray that our hearts might be like a sponge, ready to receive all the blessings that you want to give us. Fill our hearts with your love so we can love the way you do. Amen.